Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to do tubular chenille stitch. So this is a really nice stitch. And this is what it looks like close up. Really nice stitch, it's kind of got some movement, stretch, bounce to it. It's really flexible. It actually grows quite quick. Compared to some of the other tubular stitches, chenille stitch does grow quite fast so you can really get good length going quickly. You can do it with, I believe you could do it with size 15 seed beads, I haven't got an example of that. But you can do it with size 11s like this one. This is with size 8. And it's hollow too. So you could put chain through. And this is an example of size 6. I don't really like it with the size 6 as much. It's a bit, I don't know, they feel too big for this stitch but that's just me. So you can do it with all those different sizes of seed beads, so it's really good. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the stitch and how to close it up into a bangle if you want to make it continuous like these here. You can finish it off like I have done in this bracelet, just by adding a loop at the end. Um, but I like to usually do a bangle so there's no clasp. So we've got this one here, which is so pretty. I've got these um, Miyuki clear rainbow beads as the base colour and then for the accent beads I've done a mix that was, I brought it mixed, ready mixed, but you could make your own mix and I think it works really good with all, these are all transparent or silver lined so there's no opaque colours here. And that gives it a really nice crystal effect. Um, I think it works really nicely like this one and this one when you do kind of a flat opaque or matte colour for your main colour. Like this one here I've done like an opaque chalky purple and then for your second colour um, if you do a bright metallic or silver line, something that really pops and that gives a really nice effect. And so I'm going to be showing you to begin with how to start the stitch and I do it, um, I know some people do it by starting with um, like a border, I think of tubular herringbone, but I just start it um, as chenille so that I can do a bangle and then I'm going to show you how to close this one up into a bangle. So to do the bangle you're going to need at least two different colours. You can do it all the same colour but that's going to be quite tricky for beginners to know which beads they're going through, supposed to be going through. And you can do more than two colours but again that can be a bit trickier as well. So just for this video I'm going to show you basically just how to do it with two contrasting colours. So I've picked two that are quite different, one light, flat, opaque. Um, green terra dyed chalk white preciosa and then this really nice metallic colour which is preciosa 11o light turquoise so you want to pick two colours and you'll also need your thread and really any thread that you want to use will work for this and your beading needle and that's all we we'll need so let's get started so before you start you need to decide which colour you want to be the main I uh, guess background colour um, and which one you want to be that accent colour. So the main background colour is the one that obviously there's the most of so here it's the Picasso beads and the accent colour of these bronze ones in between. Um, show you on this one so the main background colour is grey and the accent beads are the silver ones in between. So you just need to decide which colour you want the main part of it to be, the colour you'll see the most of, and the little accent ones as you can see. 
there's not quite so many. So I'm going to be doing my main colour as this, um, what was it called? <laughs> oh yeah, green. Um, we'll call this green. I'm going to be doing my main colour as this light green and my accent colour is the turquoise. So I'm going to refer to them as main colour and accent colour so that when you pick which one you're doing for which you can just follow the instructions without having to get confused by my colours. So for this stitch, um, for a bangle or if even if you wanted to go on and make a necklace, it does take quite a lot of thread and usually I always end up having to add a new piece of thread. Um, I'm actually going to do a separate video soon on how I tie off my threads and how I add new pieces of thread. Um, I want to dedicate a whole video to that, um, just so people can click on it if they need to search for that information. Um, but So I would say if you're doing a bangle or um, a necklace, just really cut as much thread as you can work with to begin with and then you may have to add a new piece. Okay, so you're going to start by picking up nine beads and the order of the colour is main bead, accent bead, main bead, main bead, accent bead, main bead, main bead, accent bead, main bead. So you're picking up three little sets of three, main bead, accent bead, main bead, and so on. So you're picking up nine beads total, and this is your colour pattern. The darker ones are my accent beads. You're going to slide those down. Okay, so we've got them here at the bottom, and you're going to sew up through the first two beads so that you're coming out of that accent bead. Okay, now we've got this little circle and we're coming out one of these accent beads. Now we're going to pick up three. We're going to go main colour, accent colour, main colour. Just like that. Coming out of this one, you're going to go into the next accent bead in the circle. So that one there. Ignore those two and go into that next accent bead. They're going to sit like this. You can encourage them to sit on top if you want, but when you get around the whole circle then they'll group up. Now you're going to do the same again. So you pick up main bead, accent bead, main bead. You're coming out of this one, you're going to go into the next accent bead. So they sit like that and again I'm going to just encourage them to sit on the top. And the same again. Main bead, accent bead, main bead, flatten it down. So we're coming out of this one, we're going to go into that next accent bead in the bottom circle. Okay we've got this, now we've got to step up through. So if you bunch them up like that so they're flat, if you pull it tight they should start to bunch up so those groups we of threes that we just added you want them to sit up on the top like that and your threads coming out of the bottom of this accent bead here and you want to go up through that one above it and through the one after that so you're coming out on the top out of one of those accent beads Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing again. So you're going to pick up main bead, accent bead, main bead. You're coming out of this one. Ignore those ones in between. We're only working with these three accent beads on the top. So you're coming out of this one and you're going to go into the next one in the circle. Just this one. Like that. Pick up a main bead, an accent bead, and a main bead. So now you're coming out of this one. So you're going to go into the next one. 
on this top circle. The next accent bead. Pull it tight. Pick up a main bead, an accent bead and a main bead. Let's see. So now I'm coming out of this one. I've got to go into that last accent bead in that row. that, pull it tight, now we need to step up, so we're in this accent bead here, coming out of this one you need to step up through the next two, so you're coming out the next one there, that next turquoise, and again pull it tight, now we've got the start of stitch starting to come together. Okay and now it's basically just exactly that same thing all the way up <laughs> but I'm going to show you again. See how you can see those turquoise beads peeking out from two rows below. You don't want to accidentally go through them if they're sticking up a bit further for any reason. So always remember that you're working on these top three accent beads at all times. So we're always skipping over those ones in the middle and going through these three. And you're always picking up a main bead, an accent bead and a main bead and going into that next accent bead on the top. And that's basically the stitch. So main bead, oops, accent bead, main bead, going into the next accent bead on the top row, or on the row that we're working on I should say. Main bead, accent bead, main bead. And again, always when you get to the end, so we're coming out of this one, we need to go into that last accent bead, and always stepping up through the next two, so that you're ready to start your next row it tight and you've got this so that's it that's the basic technique that's how I get started I just start straight away with the chenille stitch tubular chenille stitch and just get going like that and if you continue doing that same step it will just keep growing and like I said at the beginning it does grow relatively fast for a tubular rope stitch um, compared to some of the others, it's a lot quicker. So I'd say these bangles, um, they took probably about an hour to make. So it's quite a fun, fast stitch. I like any stitch that grows quickly. <laughs> so that's how you do the stitch. Now I'm going to show you, using this one that I've made the length of, I'm going to show you how to close it together seamlessly so there's no seam so you can make a bangle okay so here we are so here's one i made earlier <laughs> i'm going to show you now how to finish up this as a bangle i've still got my tail thread attached which can get in the way but i'm just going to deal with it um so you've got to the length that you need and to measure a bangle I measure around whoop, the widest part of my hand so you need to make sure that your bangle fits around usually this part's the widest so I measure around that and these are quite stretchy like I said so they do roll on and off pretty easily you don't have to make them too loose so get to the length that you need and you should have finished your row and as always you should have stepped up into one of your accent beads. So you're coming out of one of those three accent beads on the top, fold it over so that your two ends meet and so on this other end you can see we've got all the way along your stitch you've got these little groups of four of your background colour and then in between them 
got your accent beads, only here we're missing our accent bead and that's how we're going to join it together. So we're going to use that accent bead from this side to slot into there. So I'm going to hold it together like this. So there's my two sides. <laughs> A little bit tricky to show you. So you're coming out of the accent bead here. And on the other side, here's one of those groups of two. So on this side, you should have on your bottom, this is like where you started. You should have three groups of two that don't have their little accent beads in the middle of them. So you want to line it up like that. So I'm coming out of this side of the accent beads, so I'm going to go into this group of two. I'm going to go through this one. On this top side like that so when it eventually pulls tight that that accent bead is going to sit between that group of two now I'm going to turn my piece around okay so now I'm coming out of this one I'm going to move through the next accent bead and the next main colour bead and this here, this left side, like that. So now I'm in the same position again, I'm between one of those groups of two, so you need to to line it back up and find your next accent bead on this one, so that one's already connected, so find your next accent bead on this side and go through it. Now I'm coming out of this side of it. I'm going to go into that next grey bead. Now we can pull it tight. Keep your tail thread pulled tight as well. See that that accent bead has popped together there. So I'm going to turn it around again. So again, I'm coming out of this one. I'm going to go through the accent bead and the next background colour. Find that last accent bead on this side which isn't connected which is this one and go through that and then back into the next background colour on the other side. And now pull it tight, pull your tail thread tight as well and that's it all connected, you can't see where it was connected and that's how you do it so now all you need to do is sew back through tighten it all up if you want to and tie off your threads and we're finished okay so that's the finished bangle and this is what they look like really nice stitch so I hope you were able to follow this tutorial and make something of your own and comment down below what else you'd like to see what the kind of stitches you'd like some tutorials on or any tips and tricks you need on any kind of stitches that you're struggling to do or anything like that I'd be happy to help um, follow me on Instagram at Beading by Hannah and subscribe to see more of my videos and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time, bye!